Welcome to Engineering 240, Computational Methods for Engineering, Lecture 11, Interpolating and Fitting Data. This video is designed to be used with the given readings and the PowerPoint of Lecture 11 available on Blackboard. This is an outline of Lecture 11. Let's just start with a brief description of interpolation. Interpolation is a method of constructing new data points within the range of a discrete set of known data points. One-dimensional interpolation is a method where two adjacent points are connected with a straight line. The equation of a straight line can be used to calculate the values of y for any x between the given points. Let's now show how to do interpolation in Excel. Linear interpolation in Excel uses the function forecast and is used in this form. It uses only two points. Let's do an example in Excel. In this example, we have data for time and voltage. We would like to find out what is the voltage that corresponds to time 125 and 489. We will use linear interpolation. We use forecast. The known value for x is the value for the time that you're looking for. The values of known of y is the values that surround the voltage for the value of time given. In this case, 125 is between 1 and 2. The voltage that we're looking for is between 9 and 15. And the values of known x's are going to be the times surrounding 1.25. To make it more accurate, notice that we use only the two surrounding points, the one above and one below. To double check, notice that the value of the voltage has to be between the two values that correspond to the time given. We will do the same procedure for 489. Once again, forecast, the known value for x. This one is surrounded between 4 and 5, so we selected the voltage. And then we select the time. Once again, we notice that 4.9 is between 32 and 42. If we want to find out what is the time to reach this particular voltage, we will also use forecast. However, we will do in a small change. We'll do forecast. The value for x, now notice that is voltages. Select the value. Then the known values for y are going to be the times for this case. We look for 31, which is between 19 and 32. Therefore, the known values for y are going to be 3 and 4. And the known value for x's are going to be this too. Notice that the particular voltage takes place between 3 and 4, and the value we get is between that range. We do the same process for 108. 108 is between 102 and 153, so we select 7 and 8. And for known values of x, we select this. Notice that exactly 108 is between 7 and 8, and 7.12 are between those two values. Let's now do interpolation using MATLAB. MATLAB can do interpolation using this format. The command is interp1. The setup is given as follows. x and y are the original vectors with the same size, and xi is the scalar or vector value that you would like to approximate. The method is one of the following four choices, nearest, linear, PC hip, or spline. Let's do a couple of examples in MATLAB. In this example, we have exactly the same data of time and voltage that we had in Excel. Once again, we would like to find out the voltage that corresponds for time one and time two. We set it up in the following way. We write interp one, Time and voltage, this corresponds to the values of x, the values of y. And we're looking for the value that of the voltage that corresponds with time 1. And the method that we're using is linear, so that we could compare it with Excel. We set it up exactly the same for the second voltage. For the second part, if you remember, we wanted to calculate the time that it took to get these voltages. We simply set it up in the, in the same way. Notice that what we do now is we switch the order of the vectors. 
since we're looking for time time is gonna go second and voltage is gonna go first and we set it up the second way in the same way we run it and notice that the values that we get are exactly the same values that we had in Excel in this example we have six points of X six points of Y and we would like to have an interpolation that crosses all the points and we would like to compare also with the original formula which is given by this the first step is to create a new vector for X that has exactly the same limits we start from 0 and we go all the way to 5 however notice that the original vector changes every one and in this case we would like to change every point to one you always have to select a delta that is significantly smaller than the original delta the next step is to create the interpolation vectors the first vector is going to be linear and we create it using the interp function we type interp1 the original vectors the new vector and we select the linear to be the method we do the same process but in this case we use a spline and in the last one we type his hip now we would like to plot together the points the function and the different interpolations to compare them the method that we're going to use to plot them is going to be subplot notice that this plot has three columns in one row so that's why it has one and three as the first two number in each one of the subplots and notice this structure is basically the same for all the plots we start with x and y which are the original row data and row data should be always plot with markers so i selected o then i plot the function so i type the vector and the function and the last thing that i do is the vector and the interpolation and then I want it to be dashed for each case run it and these are the plots that you get notice that this is the original function in green and the interpolation is in red one of the main things to notice when you do an interpolation is that regardless what interpolation you choose the interpolation always is gonna cross every single one of the points in some cases the interpolations are gonna fit properly with the data sometimes it's gonna overshoot in some cases it's gonna undershoot it all depends on the original data let's continue with a description of curve fitting Curve fitting is when a mathematical function is adjusted so that it lies as close as possible to a set of data points, reducing the amount of error between the data points and the function. Linear regression is one of the methods for determining the equation of that straight line that fits the data. You might see a derivation for the formulas used to calculate the values of m and b based on the method of linear regression. The correlation coefficient gives a measure of how well the trend line fits the data the values of r could go from negative 1 to 1 or the values of r square could go from 0 to 1 the value of r square equal to 1 represents the perfect fit the value of r square equal to 0 represents the worst possible fit let's now see how the process to add in a trend line for polynomials in Excel is done. In order to curve fit data in Excel, the first step is to plot it. We're gonna select the data, go to the insert, we're gonna select the scatter, and this is row data, we're gonna plot it using markers only. To visualize it better, we're gonna move it to its own sheet. In order to create the curve that best fit this data we're going to click in any of the points you're going to right click and select a trend line the format trend line menu will show up in order to evaluate which formula is going to be the best 
we have to display the r square value and to see what is the equation that we get we're going to click on display the equation notice for that for linear equation the value of r square is 0 0.83 that is not a very good value we want always about 0.95 or better then we're going to go polynomials notice that with the second degree polynomial the value of r square jumps to 0 0.995 which is a really good result if we try to go higher notice that it go to 0 0.3 and it goes really, really close to all the values that we have for the raw data. So for this particular set of data, R, um, the third degree polynomial would be the best fit. Let's try now to see. Let's now continue with a description of curve fitting in MATLAB. MATLAB function to create a curve fit is poly fit. It computes the least square that best fits the data of the points to a polynomial. The setup is given by this. You write polyfit, and then you use the vectors of x and y, which are the vectors that you would like to fit. They are your raw data. And n is the degree of the polynomial that you would like to fit. Unfortunately, this method requires a prior knowledge of the type of function before you could fit in MATLAB. Let's do an example in MATLAB. In this example, we have the same vectors for time and distance that we had in the previous example in Excel, and we would like to get the coefficients for the second and the third degree polynomials for this data. We set them up pretty much in the same way. We write polyfit, the original data T and D, second degree polynomial and third degree polynomial we run it notice for the second degree polynomial we get three coefficients and for the third degree polynomial we get four coefficients and if we compare the values between the excel result and the matlab result you're going to notice that they are quite similar there are going to be some variations on some of the coefficients but the percentage error is quite small this difference is due to the precision of the numbers between Excel and in MATLAB. In this example, we have a vector x and a vector y, and we would like to create a polynomial of a third degree and plot it against the data points. To create the polynomial, simply select polyfit, x and y, and third for third degree polynomial, and then to be able to create the plot, the first step is to create a new vector for x. Once again, we go from the lowest value of x to the highest value of x with a much smaller delta. In this case, we choose 0.1. Then we need to create the vector for y for the new corresponding to the new vectors for x. In order to do that, we're going to use the polyval command. Once again, we create polyval the polynomial that we just created using polyfit and the new vector for x and then we plot them all together remember row data is plot with markers only and this is the new vectors if we run it this is the plot that we get and these are the coefficients for the third degree polynomial notice that we get four coefficients if we want to simply change the polynomial from third to let's see fifth we just simply change the degree of the polynomial we run it and this is the information that we get this is the curve we get and these are the six different coefficients for the fifth degree polynomial notice that when we curve fit we only get one equation and that equation is going to fit the best and the closest to all the points this is very different from interpolation. Interpolation requires that every curve touches all and every single one of the points. Curve fitting does not. It calculates the error to minimize the distance between the equation and the points. However, it does not require the equation to touch every single one of the points. Unfortunately, also notice that in MATLAB, we do not have a way of 
using this method to calculate which equation will be better. So in many cases, Excel will be more powerful tool to evaluate what will be the best fitting curve to then bring it to MATLAB and evaluate. Let's now continue with a description of curve fitting for other functions. Let's start with Excel. In this example, we would like to fit this data with other functions besides polynomial. We use the same procedure. We select the data. We add a graph using markers only. We move it to a new sheet so that we could visualize it better. And then we add a trend line. However, in this case, we would like to choose between exponential and power. Notice that if you choose exponential and we display the equation and the value of r squared, the value of r squared is really good. It's 0 0.998. However, if we go to power, it will tell you that this might have some issues. So we will not use the power in this particular case. However, you may use this particular process to find the function for a power data. Let's continue with our description of how to create curve fitting for all the functions in MATLAB. In MATLAB, these functions can be curve fitted when they are converted into a polynomial. The simplest polynomial will be the line. Therefore, we will use the linearized equation for each function. If you recall, an exponential function is a semi-log function. Therefore, we will use a polyfit command with linear x, log y, and 1 for linear polynomial. In the same way, power functions are log-log functions. Therefore, we will use the polyfit command using log x, log y, and 1 for linear polynomial. Once you have the first degree polynomial, you will need to get the values of m and b to substitute in the original equations. This will be the original equations for exponential, and these are the original equations for power. The method to obtain m is given by this formula, and b is by this formula. These methods work for both exponential and power functions. Let's do some examples in MATLAB. In this example, we use exactly the same vectors that we had for the example in Excel, and we would like to curve fit the data to an exponential and compare it to the results that we got in Excel. We do the curve fitting by using polyfit, and since it's an exponential, we use semi-log, therefore is the vector that goes in the x-axis, the vector that goes in the y-axis with log and power 1. And then we define always m to be the first element of the polynomial and b to be the exponential of the second element in the polynomial. If we run it, this is the two coefficients that we get for the polynomial. Once again, because it's a first degree polynomial, you get two coefficients. The value of m, pretty much the same one for Excel. And this is the value of b, which is exactly the same one that we got for Excel. This is another example of how to curve fit using exponential functions. We have a vector for t and a vector for w. Notice that my vector for w was a little bit too long, so I used three consecutive dots to be able to split it into two lines. The first step that we would like to do is to polyfit into an exponential function, once again because it's polyfit we use first degree polynomial and it's exponential, so it's semi log. The x variable goes in the linear, this, the y variable goes with log, and then power 1. Then we get the values for m and for b. And then we would like to plot it all together. Once again, we get a new value for the t vector. We start from 0 to 5, however, in this time the value of delta is equal to 0.1. And then we would like to plot the formula. Since it's an exponential, we use the exponential formula, b e to the mt. 
and that's the formula we plot over here and then we plot it with the raw data once again using markers and the evaluation of the function notice that when it is exponential or power functions you cannot use the polyval to evaluate the vector you always have to use the corresponding equation whether it's exponential or power run it and this is the result that you will get this concludes lecture 11 interpolation and fitting data for engineering 240 computational methods for engineering make sure to complete the assigned readings complete the required quizzes and be ready to start class assignments